Okay, so we have the last session for today, and Bastian Brandt will be your host. Just uh, <laughs> okay, that was important. Those Apple adapters are really expensive, right? Um, yeah, we have the last discussion round. Um, you will be the host of this round, and uh, yeah, Bastian Brandt is also in venture capital and uh, is seeking for the next idea who fu to fund, right? Yeah, and um, yeah, it's your your time now. Yeah, uh, thanks. Just wait, hold on, wait a moment. Uh, uh, just Adrian, he was nice enough to give me five minutes just to tell you about the presentation that that uh, didn't take place, unfortunately, yesterday. So as, as uh, you might know, I couldn't make it yesterday evening, and so you uh, missed that presentation. I'll just tell you about the three or four key points on, on that presentation. Um, as, as Adrian already pointed out, I, I look at Bitcoin mainly from a financial investor perspective, and that's, main, that's due to my background because I worked as a, as a management consultant and uh, I was mainly doing M&A and uh, stock analysis. Uh, so uh, I've, I've spent uh, most of the last half year really to put together a perspective on how you can look at Bitcoin from a financial from an investor's perspective. Uh, and the, the result end result of that is a uh, industry report that's going to be published hopefully next week or the week after. Uh, it's depending on the layout, on the final layout. It will be like 100 pages or so, which so which is quite massive. And uh, just just let me tell you the main points. So the 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 starting point is to see if Bitcoin is a fraud and if it's uh, if it's not a fraud, uh, where to invest. And uh, in, in the course of the report, what I do is I, I scope all the different investment possibilities. So I, I look at uh, buying Bitcoin, uh, I look at the valuation of Bitcoin, I look at altcoins, uh, I look at physical Bitcoins, uh, I look at uh, startups, and then finally I also look at uh, where to or how to get exposure to startups because uh, just just one question here at that moment in time. Uh, who of you has ever invested in Havelock investments or or similar uh, things? Uh, that's a good thing. So you're you're pretty sophisticated crowd here. It's uh, it's basically unregulated uh, exchange where you can buy shares in Bitcoin startups, and uh, it's quite interesting. You can get some interesting data from these companies, but uh, yeah, the financial performance wasn't really that good. And the, the same goes for most of, of the listed Bitcoin companies. Uh, there is a couple of listed Bitcoin companies. One is Smart Equity, where is uh, here, uh, listed in, in Germany, but there is also an Australian one, which is called Digital BTC. And they have just recently announced some first numbers, which is, of course, very interesting for a financial person like me. And uh, yeah, so uh, anybody who's interested in that report, like in a week or two, it will be out. And uh, yeah, sorry for, for waiting. <laughs> Maybe Adrian should have told you about this short announcement. Uh, with that, I would like to switch, of course, to, to our panel. And uh, we have three guests. The, let's just start with the first one, who is Pavel Kravchenko, uh, then uh, who's working at Stellar as a security consultant. We have Daniel. Nice, and you've already seen him. He is uh, yesterday. He's uh, running a company called Coiner, and then finally, uh, it's Brian Fabian Crane. Uh, yeah, he has been up here on stage. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. So I would start off with, uh, with the first round. Uh, yeah, it would be nice if you just could just introduce uh, yourself and just uh, tell uh, the people how you got interested in Bitcoin and uh, what fascinates you about Bitcoin. Okay, we'll start with myself. My name is Pavel Kravchenko. I work uh, for Stellar as a security consultant and I do security research. I, I develop protocols. I research different coins, different approaches to develop, to create new things. So I am mostly in a science um, side of Bitcoin. And um, I got interested in Bitcoin only this year in Silicon Valley where I met the community and I uh, joined Stellar and 
it was really fun. And since then, due to political situation in Ukraine, I am traveling around the world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, do a lot of presentations uh, for normal people. What is Bitcoin? How it works? Why we should care? So I visit um, startup communities, companies, Bitcoin meetups, and yeah, just speak with people. So since three months, I've spoken to maybe 500 people, maybe more. Yeah. Just they hear, they have heard about Bitcoin, but not a lot. That's probably it. Thanks. Hi, I'm Daniel, as you might know now. Um, I'm interested in Bitcoin um, ever since, I would say. Um, I was interested in um, a lot of currencies as they appear or as um, yeah, they rise. So uh, in the world at the moment, we have more than 4,000 different currencies. Um, I know a lot of them, and I was really interested in how do they drive economy and what is really necessary to drive a sustainable economy. And so uh, after comparing all these different currency ideas or architectures, um, and of course also fiat currencies, um, yeah, I finally developed uh, what I call Coina today. And uh, so in comparison to all the other coins and all the other systems rising or falling, uh, yeah, there's of course also partly interest in Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, my name is Brian Crane. I'm the founder of the Bitcoin Service Polling Group. So we're a uh, meetup there. And we've had Pop as well speaking there, for example. Uh, and I also do the episode of Bitcoin podcast. So we're actually going to have Bastian on. So uh, if he, you know, since you missed his talk, uh, we will talk about his paper. Um, so I got interested in Bitcoin um, a year and a half ago about. I was writing a um, master thesis in cognitive science at the time, but I'm originally an economist. So uh, I became extremely interested extremely quickly. Um, and I think what I find most fascinating about it is just that it really is a sort of a, a starting from scratch, right? We have this existing systems, the banking system, which is very old, and the existing economic structures. And uh, with Bitcoin, you just kind of start fresh and you can see like, oh, well, what will be possible? And I think that enormous amount of possibility uh, and that exploration that's possible, I think that's extremely interesting. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's it's really always nice to hear how people got to know about Bitcoin and uh, what uh, motivates them. Uh, yeah, we uh, just sort of really to start with the discussion. The the title of this panel is "New Ways to Disrupt Finance," which is rather rather broad topic. Uh, and I would like to talk about that, but I would also like to to wrap up some of the topics that we have touched on uh, over the last couple of hours. Uh, yeah, I. So, so my first question to you is, uh, let's maybe start with, uh, with Brian. Uh, what do you think are other ways that in which Bitcoin could uh, disrupt the financial world um, and uh, give them different time frames? And yeah, if I just point out two or three topics. Yeah, so I think the time frame question is, is really key, right? Because we, we we have now like Ethereum and all those protocols. You have uh, all these uh, crazy uh, possibilities and things people talk about, like from decentralized organizations, etc. Uh, but I think when we look at a time frame, I think what's sort of first is money and, and payments and just transferring money. So I think that's that's really what I think is is going to perhaps be the most important in the next two years or something. And of course, afterwards there are things like like peer-to-peer -peer lending or uh, decentralized insurance market, I think, is really interesting. Um, also, uh, the idea of crypto equities, right? So to have uh, your equities uh, traded on a blockchain, etc. But I also think that's going to take a long time. So I sort of think, uh, in in the meantime, what's really um, what's really going to drive it is is adoption and and money and payments and remittances. And then there are other projects like Stellar or things that are interesting. So. It's just what, what comes to my mind, 
after your statement is uh, we have we have heard Pavel Chutzinski <laughs> saying that yeah everybody's going crazy about all these uh, crazy new projects like Ethereum. Uh, why don't we just make Bitcoin one more work for the time being? It's interesting that if you look around and there are actually things like the Ethereum meetups. Um, yeah, uh, it's people are really getting enthusiastic already about the next generation, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe Pavel, maybe you can uh, tell us why, <laughs> because you're also on a, working on a sophisticated new project, which is uh, which is Stellar. Uh, yeah, just tell us a bit about Stellar, please. I would say it's not super sophisticated. Uh, yeah. I mean, for me. Um, to be honest, it was a bit hard to understand what is Ripple that time after reading all the Bitcoin papers because it's just a completely different concept. But if you think about Stellar Ripple concept uh, from scratch, it's just the same as we have in the existing financial system. It's the same relationship. So Stellar itself, it's not just a currency, new currency. It's a protocol for making financial transactions in any kind of cryptocurrency or fiat money. So just a protocol. You can think about Stellar as a um, HTTP for financial world. It just allows um, existing banking system um, to become more transparent, reliable, and secure. So that's the goal of protocol. And um, then, yeah, sure, you have a lot of applications. And if uh, your question was about why people are so excited about the next thing, mm, just we have such a community <laughs> that are really driving the innovation. So it should pass some time until we do it really like in Apple style. So, I just, just, uh, just, uh, I'm just curious about how, how was it in your case? Uh, I mean, you also made maybe a conscious decision, maybe a pragmatic decision, not to not to go into Bitcoin as such, but to go into some some other uh, technology which is a bit similar. Is uh, was there some special um, yeah was it appeal uh, yeah. to you uh, for on th these technologies? Okay, I have to start from my understanding why Bitcoin is important for financial world. I think that uh, features like decentralization, like secure transaction, fast transaction, are important, but more important is the fact that with Bitcoin, you can transfer real value through the internet. You cannot do this with existing mechanisms. You cannot transfer cash through the internet or gold. You can transfer only only liabilities like PayPal, PayPal balance or future contracts. But in this case, you have to trust PayPal uh, so it will return your money after the claim. With Bitcoin, with any cryptocurrency, you can transfer real value instantly. And the, the second part is that uh, I think that in financial, we have to disrupt financial world by doing it, making it more transparent, more reliable, and secure. And it means that we have to create a mechanisms for existing systems. So that was the idea to build a protocol uh, like Stellar for the whole financial world, not to to change the rules completely, but to bring principles from cryptocurrency to existing financial system. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, and maybe after somebody is asking a question how Stella and Ripple uh, compare to each other, maybe let's, let's go on with, with Daniel. Okay. <laughs> it would be good if somebody asked the question because I'm really curious about that question. But yeah, Daniel, he wants to speak as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's um, you, uh, Pavel, he mentioned uh, the different properties of, of, of the cryptocurrencies and uh, uh, some like transparency, uh, like uh, open source uh, that you typically have. Uh, one one important characteristic of, of Bitcoin is the limited amount of coins. And uh, we actually just had a short discussion. And uh, as far as I understood, you you don't like that concept too much, and you have a different philosophy. Yes, 
Correct. Well, the Bitcoin basically extract, extracts liquidity from the markets. And this is not what the world needs. I mean, it's fine for the people who are gaining value with it, but that has nothing to do with money. Money itself, or currency, the word currency is a current, it flows. You need to make something flow through the market, not extract it through, out of the market. So this is just the opposite. And as we talk about finance disruption, or disrupting finance, um, nobody in the world has yet understood what money really is. There has been no disruption in terms of money, only on the terms of payment or technology, but not in terms of money. Nobody has touched the biggest market of all, which is money creation. And this is exactly what we do. So nobody has really disrupted that yet. There, you know, some people think they have touched it, but they have not. And so this is basically um, why I'm working on what I work. The two others, anything to to comment <laughs> on that? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't know exactly. I, I don't know. I, I guess we could go into coin, uh, but I. Well, Bitcoin does seem fundamentally different to me than other types of money. Of course, it's different, but it's not what the world really needs. Um, the if you want to make economy dry, uh, thrive, it is just the opposite that you need. And if we talk about money creation, no matter what Coiner does, but money creation is the key, and nothing else. And if you understand what money really is or should be, then you can design a concept or a, a currency architecture for that special purpose. And that's very important to understand for everybody. There is no monetary system that can cover all the needs that money has. So you only are able to build a currency system for specific needs and for a specific target group. The euro has shown it doesn't work if you want to make it all. And so that's why we uh, more and more will have a fragmented currency world, uh, which uh, we call in Germany um, monetary Vielfalt. Yeah, I've, 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 uh, there are two, two points that I took from your statement. First, that uh, there are basically different philosophies to money. Exactly. And the uh, second one, that we should have uh, a variety of options. Exactly. So there shouldn't be only uh, one Bitcoin that dominates everything, but there should be different concepts. Uh, yeah, I would just like hear from the two others, uh, from Brian or Pavel, what they uh, think about alternatives to or to Bitcoin. There are also some ideas to have elastic money. Uh, there are ideas to to link uh, the blockchain mining proof of work to something useful. Uh, yeah, so there's there, there's all there's a lot of different concepts uh, brought forward typically in the form of altcoins. So. Yeah. So first of all, I think I have no doubts. I, I at the meetup there was some guy showing that there was like 600 altcoins created, and he said there was only going to be four in some time. I, I totally don't believe that. I think there is going to be way more, and there's going to be all kinds of specialized cryptocurrencies, and you know, airlines will have their own, and everybody will make their own, etc. So I do believe that sort of niche case. Uh, I, I I think that's bound to happen. There's no question. Um, Regarding like is Bitcoin good or is it not what the world needs? I, I I don't know. I'm sort of agnostic on that point. Uh, I when generally I feel when people make the argument that deflation is bad, I feel they they take instances where deflation has been rising in times of difficult economic situations and then just sort of project it forward. And I I don't think that's a a viable way to approach it. So I, I just I have absolutely no clue whether um, the sort of deflationary characteristic of Bitcoin is going to have a you know overall good or negative economic effect. I, I suspect it may not be so. It may turn out to be just fine, but uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Okay, my opinion here is that we had a very good discussion with Daniel and we agreed that really uh, Bitcoin is in trend right now because people uh, lack trust to institutions, to anybody. They want to have a solution that don't require any trust to anybody. Um, 
that was also because of financial crisis, Cyprus bank crisis, etc., etc. And um, Koina um, philosophy is that in a world of mutual trust, we don't need Bitcoin, like okay, like a finite currency when you don't need tr to trust. We, vice versa, we need to trust each other. So that was just another approach, and. Um, these two approaches will definitely coexist. It's nothing bad here. And uh, regarding the um, altcoins, I think that Bitcoin will not be the only one. It's just like a Xerox in a copy market. Uh, just was the first, was the strongest marketing presence. And there are any a lot of other coins which are better in some features, like Monero in anonymity. So and they might survive. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I, I was uh, can I just add something from history? Uh, the British Commonwealth is a very good example for multiple currencies. Um, it is one of the reasons why the British Commonwealth has been so successful, because every bank in the British Commonwealth was able to issue their own money, and they did. And that were in the beginning 30, fix, uh, 36, 000, um, more than 36, 30, oh, sorry, more than 36,000 banks. And at the end of the British Commonwealth, it was about 30. So the competition among the different banks issuing different currencies with a different architecture and a different purpose um, is what we have in nature. Vielfalt, diversity, drives different um, developments. And this is also key for money, not only for economy. Yeah, that's, that actually leads to a nice follow-up question to Brian, because uh, I'm listening to his, uh, fairly regularly, to his podcast, uh, Epicenter. And there was a very interesting episode with Mike Hearn, and where he said, yeah, there's not so much development going on in the Bitcoin Core protocol anymore. and uh, uh, there was also this notion that actually all these alternative coins, they take away uh, the, uh, manpower, uh, like for developer, uh, developing, uh, developers hours from Bitcoin. So what do you think about this idea that uh, these alternative coins are maybe not so good because people don't take the same effort anymore to, to further develop Bitcoin? Um. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for me to, so yeah, my currents, they, they created lots of discussion, and, you know, Peter Todd told you was an idiot, etc. So uh, I, I personally, like, I cannot really judge whether there is enough development going on on the core Bitcoin protocol or not. Um, it, it's obviously that it's a, it's like a public good, right? So the work being done for that is sort of benefited by everybody, but it's hard to get people to pay for it. I guess that's why also why he's doing his lighthouse thing, so to, to solve this and have a sort of crowdfunding com a platform for Bitcoin development. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will improve the funding for Bitcoin development. Whether now other platforms take away some energy, uh, sure, right? So, but, but I think we also have to differentiate there. Now, uh, I guess a lot of altcoins are just created for people who want to get rich. Now, those people probably wouldn't contribute anything valuable anyway if their only motivation, you know, to clone it. And and then when you have people developing things on a platform that are actually innovative, like whether it's like Ethereum or Counterparty or something, then um, I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, I think that's it's good and it's valuable. And even if it will take years to get somewhere, uh, I, you know, I think that's uh, that's that's good. So, um. yeah, excellent, excellent. Uh, we, yeah, the, as I said, the, the, the title of this uh, panel is, uh, yeah, Ways to Disrupt Finance. Uh, I think, I guess, if people who read that, most of us think about really Wall Street, Singapore, or, yeah, sophisticated markets uh, in developed countries, uh, Western developed countries. I, I just, uh, it just was very uh, interesting for me to see that Ukraine is really on top. Uh, in terms of mining and in terms of adoption, in a way, uh, yeah, I would like to, to hear from uh, from Pavel if he has by any chance any ideas or stories on uh, yeah on on the situation in Ukraine uh, concerning cryptocurrency. 
Okay, mm, I've seen some studies where research where Ukraine has 10% of the whole Bitcoin economy. That's probably, yeah, that some coin desk or whatever. Uh, that's probably because I can believe because yeah, energy price is really cheap. You can get it two cents per kilowatt, and also you can get it for free if you are smart enough. Um, yeah, and you don't need to pay any taxes. I mean, you can just set up your miners. You can bring them in your <laughs> pockets, and that's it. And uh, uh, due to a huge amount of developers in Ukraine, it's around two hundred thousand. Um, a lot of companies outsourced um, development there, and also Bitcoin development. So the biggest, um, probably the, yeah, the biggest mining pool, Jihashio, also is run by Ukrainian people. And uh, that explains, yeah, yeah. Uh, the rest, I would say maybe a lot of black money on this market too, due to political reasons. Um, but the core of this movement, I think, developers. Yeah. Uh, good. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I have a question too, uh, additional question. I don't know how much time we still have. Uh, I have one additional question to, to everybody here. Uh, we have talked uh, about, uh, yeah, about all the shortcomings of Bitcoin, or all the, the roadblocks which is regulation and security and marketing and so on and so forth. And now we have, uh, we have our topic here is finance. I'm just curious, what do you think? What uh, will come first, uh, mass adoption or some revolutionary breakthrough um, of, of Bitcoin as a, as a way, uh, Bitcoin or similar technologies as a way to, to disrupt finance? So what is first, it, um, commerce or finance? I don't know. Um, I, I just can't, can say that there are so many projects out there and some of them are really, really powerful. For example, on a legal side, I know some guys who are suing the banking sector at the moment for the Bundesverfassungsgericht for being completely illegal because the money that they create through credit is not a legal tender. And this is really the fact. It's just allowed, but it's no legal tender. So the whole business model of the banking sector at the moment is legally illegal. So that's why, by the way, in the US, in the 90s, they have stated that already, but nobody took notice. So if that goes through, the whole world will change completely quickly. Um, so this is why I'm saying there are some really powerful things going on and you cannot predict what will happen and what will come first. There's so many different powerful tools and projects and yeah, that's all I can say. Yeah, I have some doubts whether the Bundesverfassungsgericht is gonna declare the banking industry illegal, but. <laughs> um, so I, I guess the way you understand your questions, right? So. Uh, you know, there's like Bitcoin adoption, people using Bitcoin, and then there could be uh, people using things that are have some sort of Bitcoin cryptocurrency thing behind, but they're not actually using Bitcoin, and that could be revolutionary, right? And and get adopted a lot. Uh, I I don't know which one is going to happen first, right? But at the moment, what we do have a bit of an issue is so that the incentive for normal people to adopt Bitcoin, which is not really there, uh, at, unless they want to speculate and believe in the future value. So, so that's obviously something we have to solve. And, and if that doesn't get solved soon enough, then perhaps it will be that there will just be applications doing things that currently aren't possible with cryptocurrencies behind and that then get adopted because they're just really cool. So uh, I, I don't know which one's going to happen. I, I guess we'll, we'll see. I think uh, for you, Pavel, this a question is particularly interesting. So what do you think? Will uh, Stellar take off first or Bitcoin? Just different um, purpose projects. So I would say that with high probability Stellar will take a market of transportation of value. 
any kind of value, fiat money, cryptocurrency, and Bitcoin itself, it's a very good uh, mechanism to store value itself. So I don't see any contradictions here. Mm. So regarding the problem, what will be the first finance or economic things that I think it's chicken egg problem. So we need to develop both. That's it. Okay, then really the last question, uh, which comes from myself as a, in the role as a, as a financial investor. Uh, what if you had a uh, 10,000 euros uh, to, to, to spend or to invest, uh, what would you buy with it? <laughs> yeah, all of you, all, all, all of this, this, this question goes to the three of you. So I, I presume you want to limit that to something. Yes, it should be so somehow no, not like related a, to cryptocurrencies. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> can uh, also talk about cars. You mean you like. invest? <laughs> you mean invest specifically? If I understood you correctly, before. I'm not talking about medical marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would take all of it and invest in Butterfly Labs hardware. <laughs> uh, no, no, seriously. I think probably. Uh, that's a, an, an interesting thing you often see when people sort of new to Bitcoin and and they're like, well, what what coin should I buy? You know, where should, should I go? Because like, they feel like Bitcoin's now too expensive. It's it's over. They've missed it. But but maybe one of those other weird coins that nobody's ever heard of. Maybe they because they're not worth anything right now. They have much more potential. I think that's totally wrong. So I you know I would sort of. For anyone, you know, I think sort of 90% of whatever they want to invest in this whole space should just be in Bitcoin, and then the rest, you know, just try whatever out, what there is, and see where things go. And I mean, for example, Ethereum, I think is exciting, but of course, it's totally unproven and much riskier than Bitcoin. So, uh, if somebody took like all their Bitcoins and sold them for like bought Ether with them, I think that would be really stupid. Um, so yeah, that's my view. Well, I would, of course, invest in my own project. <laughs> okay, I just can say that I believe that the whole cryptocurrency market will grow. I don't know which currency will grow more, but it's the, it's true that it will grow because the community is very active and we spread the word about cryptocurrency every day, every single day. Uh, I would personally create a portfolio of different coins and split it between them. That's it. Thanks a lot. Please give a <laughs> hand. Yeah, thank you, guys. Okay. Um, there's one question here. Yeah? Two? Uh, Christian Jacken, uh, co-founder of uh, Liquid Democracy, and I also participated in the, in the group of about 50 people, which uh, um, led to the foundation of the German Pirate Party. Um, but I, I left uh, last last year, and um, also due to um, uh, financial uh, issues about financial markets um, and so on, and uh, which relates to what um, some of you have, have said. And um, first, um, actually, is it okay if I make a, a quick comment? It's more a comment like, uh, uh, than a question. Okay. <clears throat> um, it was mentioned that um, there is a um, proceeding at the German Constitutional Court um, about the banking system. Um, I know about that discussion, but um, uh, as we have seen in, in previous trials, like um, the trial um, of um, over 10,000 members of Mehr Demokratie, uh, More Democracy, uh, it's a German association, also uh, people, uh, economists related uh, to uh, some parties uh, like uh, AFD, Freie Wähler, and so on, um, they, they did not succeed uh, and um, the the president of um, the German Constitution, Constitutional Court, Faskule, um, when they asked it for a preliminary injunction, um, he stated um, that um, it would be somewhat dangerous to um, 
um, make some decision uh, which could um, <clears throat> uh, make the markets become more um, exalted or uh, um, which would, would, could uh, promote fear. And when you get to a point in a legal system uh, where <clears throat> uh, the judges, uh, they start to take this kind of thing into account, you no longer have uh, fair trials. Um, so I, I don't um, I don't believe because it, you should apply the law uh, without um, uh, thinking which other uh, consequences this may have. So I mean, if if it hurts banks, that that's the problem of of banks. Um, it should be. Um, <clears throat> so I I don't believe that um, there will um, be a, a, a change and. Uh, um, I think that um, Europe is um, very much under control of um, the, the large financial system um, through the um, euro, um, uh, through the, uh, um, uh, the, the, the policy of the um, European Central Bank and so on, uh, which is, um, I mean, uh, Mr. Draghi has formerly uh, was working at Goldman Sachs and so on. Okay, uh, sorry, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, also, it was mentioned like that um, uh, the uh, about, about you were talking about money creation and um, that uh, I, I'm I'm finishing. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> that um, many things could be done uh, differently, and I I want to um, suggest uh, that. Um, um, there, there, there is a, the so-called Austrian School of Economics, which explains, I think, uh, very well uh, many issues, issues which also have uh, can be applied to cryptocurrencies. And uh, actually, there is one great book from uh, Ludwig von Mises, uh, which you can get uh, for free. Um, and we, we take the discussion. Uh, it's not actually a question to this discussion, but. Uh, it's probably interesting to discuss it later with a beer, okay? Yeah, no, no, thank you. Just thank you. Yeah. To the topic, right? Yeah. Um, so what I really like about Bitcoin and what Bitcoin trading um, differentiates between uh, conventional markets is it is traded 24-7. So most of the stocks are, for instance, uh, traded between business hours uh, and then you have some aftermarket um, and pre-market, but only um, um, specialized people can access these markets. So, for instance, if Facebook gives out new numbers, you can only buy after our uh, trading. So, Bitcoin is a transparent market with 24-7. Um, do you think we will see in the future, based on blockchain-based technology, more stocks being traded or dividends being paid out? or? You can buy bonds or um, yeah, all, all these kinds of financial uh, stuff. Will it be, uh, or, or do you think banks will incorporate that into their systems because I think it's more efficient? It's just a good te blockchain technology is a perfect solution for stable history of transactions. So if you post a transaction, you cannot change the, it later. You cannot remove it, whatever. So. It's a very good solution. Probably, my chance like 80% that they will incorporate the technology in their systems. Okay, the last question, please. Uh, okay, two questions. First, uh, uh, who is Satoshi? <laughs> Just joking. Second, <laughs> I think it's Alan Reiner. He admitted it. I've no? been looking for him. Uh, still haven't. Okay, second one um, coming from Africa, where you have uh, all sorts of disparate uh, financial systems and non, -exi non existent systems in some cases. Uh, what would you say would be the, like the killer app for cryptocurrency in? Imagine economies like uh, Africa, and uh, I mean, usually sometimes you say imag imagine you talk about countries yeah. that are doing well in Asia, but I really, really imagine uh, economies will be like the killer app for uh, cryptocurrencies. In, in uh, also considering that um, some some of the uh, like mobile payments is pretty huge now. In you have a country like Kenya where mobile payments is 
like uh, they are sort of sort of the pioneers. So, uh, what's the killer app, more or less? Yeah, of course. I think payments, and for that you need adoption. And and I think what's especially important is to have a service like Thirty Seven Coins that works for uh, <laughs> non-smartphone wallets. I even think that it will not be an app, but a device. Probably very simple, but secure device that, uh, with the help of which you can send money, store money, exchange, trade, whatever. But not in a smartphone, because smartphone is exposed to malware, whatever. Just simple stuff, like a credit card. OK, thank you, guys. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bastian, for the host. Thank you, guys, for the discussion.